Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Texas lawmakers approve putting chaplains in public schools. A Christian college rules to expel Christians over transgender pronouns. We interview Tanner Egloff and Trey Craddock with Turning Point USA. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. Lawmakers in Texas have now approved chaplains being placed in public schools in counseling roles, which give students an alternative to the pro-LGBT counselors that are telling them to become transgender. ValleyCentral.com reports that in recent legislative session in the Texas State Capitol, lawmakers have passed to allow public schools to hire chaplains to be in a counseling role for students. It's optional, the students don't have to get the counseling, but if they need spiritual care, they can choose. If the school district approves, and Texas is not mandating this, but they're giving school districts the option to hire them. Opening the door for more religion in public schools has come with some pushback from the leftists and gay groups that don't want chaplains in schools. Uh, Valley mother of two, Rose Guerra, says that it is beneficial to have chaplains on school campuses. She said the following, quote, I think that it's a good thing, other than those things on in the world, even hearing them, uh, just hearing parents talk about it. It's a stressful thing, but also when those children go through testing, it's a good thing for them to have, end quote. Area chaplains say this is going to help children. It's going to reduce stress for not just students, but also teachers could have access to somebody to pray with. Associate clinical chaplain and pastoral counselor, Lisa Eilman said the following, quote, now maybe if a, that teacher comes into our office, it lets that out, the stress that is. Uh, with us because we're here to hear. Sometimes all they need is someone to listen to them so that if they come in and they're able to treat the children a little bit better, that's a good thing, end quote. Yet others feel church and state need to be more separated. Opening the door for more religion in public schools somehow violates religious freedom. Well, I thought religious freedom would be the freedom to have access the religion, but no. A lot of the gay groups are twisting this to say, uh, their complainants say they don't deserve to have their beliefs taken away. Wait a minute, adding chaplains is somehow going to suppress or take away the beliefs of gay groups who don't believe in God. That's their argument, uh, but they don't have a religious fig figure saying uh, that they're wrong for how they live. Oh, I see. So they don't wanna to be told anything that they don't wanna hear, therefore everyone else needs to be quiet. Chaplains understand this conundrum and they say that passing the law could come with some criticism, but I also say that chaplains and clergy and students can all learn from each other and benefit from this program. That's the news. Our thanks to valleycentral.com for that report. Um, and there were some other pro-gay criticisms that I chose not to quote here, uh, but let's take a moment and discern the spirits. In this story, we have chaplains, and we have teachers, and we have students, and we have school boards, and we have the Texas legislature. Those are the human actors in the story. Where are the non-human actors? How do you discern the spirit of God, or the angels, or the demons behind the news in this story? We can do that through the lens of human morality, from a biblical perspective as it influences the human actors and their choice to choose holiness or sin. What do I mean by that? 
Well, let's say that you're a student or the parent of a student, right? And you're going to school and you're facing pressures and you're, you're taking tests and you're uh, you know, socializing with other kids and one day other kids influence you and say, oh, uh, you're a boy but, but you talk like a girl, maybe you're transgender. Well, that kid is now confused by the messages. His parents are Christian, but his peers are pushing him towards this other idea. Where does he turn? He might turn to a pro-gay counselor who tells him, oh, definitely, you're transgender. Go ahead and uh, take the hormones and, and have your uh, surgery. Become a girl, little boy. Well, that's a demonic voice of lying that may be speaking through the pro-gay counselors. Where is the voice of God? The voice of God may be coming to him finally from a chaplain, someone who appreciates, who agrees with his parents' faith and says to a boy, God made you to be special. God made you to be unique. Love yourself the way God made you to be. Don't hate yourself. Don't mutilate your own body. The spirit of love may be speaking through that chaplain and that is the spirit of God. The Bible says this in Jeremiah 3, I, God, will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Let's pray about this, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray for all of the students of Texas public schools, that they will have a choice, that you will set before them blessings and curses, that this day they will choose the Lord and they will receive the blessings of God. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, a Christian college is now threatening to expel Christians over transgender pronouns? We're here in Israel, in literally the scene of all of the holy sites, like the Via Dolorosa, where Jesus carried his cross, the garden tomb where he was raised from the dead, the Sea of Galilee, where he taught the disciples. And I prayed, Lord, how can I bring this inspiring environment into your living room? And what we've produced, is a four DVD disc set with the entire Gospel of Matthew. I teach every verse in all 28 chapters of Matthew in short 12 minute segments. So you can understand the exact words that Jesus taught from the exact location where Jesus lived. Pick up the phone right now and call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. For a suggested donation of just $50, we'll give you all four discs, the entire Gospel of Matthew, or you can write to us at the address on your screen or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. You're gonna love this Bible teaching. Pick up the phone and call us today. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, Jesus taught the parable about sowing the seed and you don't want it wasted. You want it to grow with 30, 60, 100 fold for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. I'll tell you three mission areas that we're doing here at Pray In Jesus Name. I think our charity does more with less than any other charity I know. We are fertile seed. For example, number one, we pray in millions of television homes every day or every weekend on eight networks. We have 2.5 billion home TV impressions every month. The second area, we feed orphans and children in some of the poorest slums overseas. We're building a new vocational school, we're digging wells, and we're serving the poor when you give to pray in Jesus' name. Number three, we defend religious freedom, especially for our troops and our chaplains. We've now helped send five million petitions to Congress. We've helped change bad laws or policies in 13 states and four times in federal law. You know my story as a former Navy chaplain, standing up for the right to pray in Jesus' name and defending religious freedom. Would you donate today? In fact, we want you to come up monthly pledge sponsor when you visit PrayInJesusName.org, on the right side, click the Monthly Pledge Sponsor button at PrayInJesusName.org. Your monthly gift will help change the world in Jesus' name. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our next story comes from Fox News and also The Blaze, who both confirm there is a college in England, a subset of Oxford University, but it happens to be Regent's Park College, one of, I think, 41 colleges under the Oxford system. They're now threatening to expel Christians. 
if the Christians don't use transgender pronouns to address their transgender classmates. That college recently released a statement explaining the school's new disciplinary action policy for students who are dared to be accused of misgendering their peers. Regents Park College, which specializes in arts and humanities, is one of, oh, I think there's 44 colleges within the Oxford University system. But last week, Thursday, the school published a transgender inclusion statement, and the new policy explains that it is considered bullying or harassment to misgender, that is, call a boy a boy, or tell the truth, it, you're punished for telling the truth, uh, or anyone who's non-binary identifying individuals, you've got to refer to them by their preferred name, not their birth name, or their preferred gender pronoun, not their birth pronoun. The, the school statement reads as follows, quote, Regents Park College, which by the way was founded as all Oxford schools were founded as a Christian college, right? Not anymore. They recognize that now there is a difference between assigned sex and gender identity expression. Where this statement refers to trans people, it has in mind people living with any of these identities, which are actually demons, right? The identities, multiple personality, whatever you call it. When it refers to gender identity, it covers the genders, fixed or fluid, of those who do and do not identify with the sex of their birth. Any unlawful discrimination behavior, including transphobic harassment or bullying of by individuals or groups, will be regarded extremely seriously and could be grounds for disciplinary action, which may include expulsion of you Christians who don't lie with them, or dismissal, you teachers who don't go along with the party line. Such behavior will be dealt with under the college's policy of harassment and bullying, and within the re relevant legislation of the Equality Act of 2010. Persistently misgendering an individual with the wrong name or pronoun, and claiming to have done so accidentally, might be experienced as harassment by the person concerned. People who are perceived to be transgender, including those who are intersex, are protected from bullying and harassment, whether or not the perception is true whether or not the perception is true, whether or not the perception is true. So, end quote. In other words, it doesn't matter what the truth is. Even if a boy is a boy and you call him a boy, your speaking the truth could get you expelled. <laughs> Christians will be the first to be expelled because we're the ones who don't go along with that. <clears throat> because we don't want to be liars. They can be liars, but we don't want to join them. Transphobic harassment or bullying is against the school's policy and the UK's law of 2010. They call it the Equality Act, but really it's inequality for Christians. They call it the anti-discrimination law, but really it's discrimination against Christians who speak the truth. And it somehow protects individuals from unlawful words. I guess they don't have free speech in the UK based on age, sex, sexual orientation, gender reassignment, or religious beliefs. Oh, wait, or religious beliefs. So in other words, if you speak your religious beliefs, you can't be discriminated against either. They're violating that law, Regents College's lawbreakers. The school statement crafted with the help of students, not lawyers, but students, they say that individuals who do not conform to binary gender norms may experience more harassment than those who successfully pass as male or female. I'll get into that in a second. What does it mean to pass? <clears throat> the school forbids students from engaging in inappropriate behavior, including making jokes, denying or disputing a tr gender's transgender identity, uh, unduly intrusive or personal questioning, dead naming. What is dead naming? I'll explain that in a second or refusing to treat a person in accordance with their affirmed identity. The statement adds that all alleged infractions of the school's policy will be investigated on a case-by-case -case basis, and that's the news, or thanks to Fox News and The Blaze. Okay, what is dead naming? Well, that is, according to the transgenders, right? They were born with the name 
Michael, but now they call themselves Michelle. Well, if you, if you refer to that person as Michael, you can be expelled from college. Or what does it mean to pass? Okay, it means if a, if a man puts on makeup and he really looks like a girl and nobody doubts that, then he can pass. He can get away with it, but if he doesn't put on enough makeup and he doesn't look like a girl, then everyone's making fun of him because he's obviously a man, he's just trying to look like a girl, but he doesn't pass. Well, you can't point that out because the Christian might be expelled for pointing that out. Uh, this is the nonsense that is coming against Christians. The Bible predicted this, Jesus himself said in John 15. If the world hates you, just know that before it hated you, it also hated me. Let's take a short break. When we come back, a couple of young college Republicans from CU Boulder. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Hi, I'm Dr. Chaps. I wanna introduce my friend, Mike Lindell, who wants to help support our ministry and the work of PIJN News. Uh, Mike, what do you think? Well, I think everybody out there, y'all need to get behind Pray In Jesus Names Ministry. Dr. Chaps here, but this great ministry needs your support and you can, you should donate to it. You can also use your promo code Pray News and anything you're getting from my pillow with big discounts, a lot of those proceeds are coming right back. I'm gonna put them right back into this, into your amazing charity and show. Well, thank you, sir. I accept that endorsement and we support your work at MyPillow.com. Remember everybody, when you visit, use the promo code PRAYNEWS, you get a big discount and our charity gets a little bit of help. So thank you, Mike Lindell, for your support. They get a lot of help, not a little bit, a lot of help. (laughs) We need all we can get for Jesus name, amen. Amen. Looks like you've been sleeping well. Megan! He's back, the my pillow guy. And you're looking good. I'm still feeling good. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, we've got the best pillow ever, my pillow 2.0. When I invented my pillow, it had everything you'd ever want in a pillow. Well, now there's new technology that makes it even better. My pillow 2.0 has my patented fill combined with a cooling fabric with temperature regulating thread. My pillow 2.0 is truly the next generation of my pillow. The best sleep just got even better. Whether you have a MyPillow or not, you need to get the brand new MyPillow 2.0. Call or go to MyPillow.com now. Use your promo code and for a limited time when you buy one, you'll get a second one absolutely free. You're sleeping even better. And cooler too. And you're looking good. Feeling good. I knew you would. Visit MyPillow.com. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell and I'm here to tell you about my new product from MyPillow towels that actually work. Watch this absorbency test. Here's another towel that we randomly went out and bought. Here's one of my towels with a nice design. I don't know if you can see this, but you could line a swimming pool with this. I mean, this is crazy. Get rid of it. Towels that actually work. What a concept. I really love the towels. They're really great. They're super absorbent. I'm interrupting this commercial to let you know we're having the biggest clearance sale ever. Get our six piece towel sets for only $29.88 with your promo code. My towel sets are made with proprietary technology and include two bath towels, two hand towels, and two washcloths. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get our six piece towel sets. Originally $99.98, then on sale for $49.98. Now we're closing them out for only $29.88 while supplies last. Once they're gone, they're gone, so please order now. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Joined now at the Western Conservative Summit by Tanner Egloth with Turning Point USA uh, and Trey Craddock, who also, they both attend CU Boulder. Now, if there's any more liberal college in Colorado. I don't know it, but if you go to CU Boulder, you must be a a crazy woke leftist, right? Uh, No, these guys are actually conservative, Christian, Republican oriented young souls like myself. I wanna welcome you both to the program and thanks for taking the plunge here. Yeah, of course, thank you for having us. What is Turning Point USA and uh, why are you part of that movement? Yeah, so Turning Point USA is a 501c3, so making it a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization. 
our three pillars which we're built upon is that the Constitution is the greatest political document ever written, that free speech is for everybody and it's absolute, and that free markets are the greatest way to bring a country out of poverty and ensure their flourishment. And we just are on presence fighting the culture war because we believe our ideas are what are essential to making a better future for ourselves. We do tabling efforts where we uh, interact and debate and converse with other students, often uh, with a negative outcome, at least uh, how they like to perceive it. But we also do socials, we have events. We had our founder, Charlie Kirk, here not too long ago, which was a terrific sold out event. We had to escort a couple of uh, crazy uh, protesters out, but it was a success. Did they allow Charlie Kirk onto the CU Boulder campus? It was a bit of a struggle, but in the end they did. They had to. Uh, but they did not make it easy and they fought us the whole way. They had protesters there up until even when he was speaking, when we had to escort them out because they wouldn't let him say a word. Wow. So the leftists know all about free speech, but have you experienced or heard about cases where they want to limit conservatives' free speech? Oh, of course, of course. They're, if the left didn't have a double standard, they'd have no standards, is what we like to say. Nice. They, they love to say that they're all for free speech, but as soon as an opinion that differs from them, it's all anarchy. It's all hell breaks loose. And they fight us, like I said, every step of the way. They try to censor us. They put us in corners where we're not able to speak, but we triumph because we know what we're fighting for is key to making sure we live in a better country. And we also have the support of great patriots and God on our side. Yeah, so Trey, you're an econ major. Uh, and one of the principles you talked about is free market economics. Why is that important to you? Well, it's, a, it's important to us because without the free market economics, we go to a social disaster where we're going through times like these with the mid, you know, recession, like problems in our country. And the fact that we have to raise our debt ceiling in America, $34.1 trillion in debt, $2.4 million or trillion dollars were given to that debt ceiling to pay for people to like pay it off. But we can't do that because the Department of Treasury is so much far into debt. They can't keep paying people, and we're just becoming China dependent, and that's bad for the country. And it's just turning into socialism, which will then turn into communism, and it's just not good for our country right now. And I feel like that's like a leading factor in why we have a $34.1 trillion debt in America that we can't pay off. So you attend CU Boulder, and you're learning economics from some of the most liberal economics professors in America. Do they teach like? a Keynesian model where big government spending is good and you could just spend other people's money until it's all gone? Well, I mean, that's like the typical idea because every time a question is brought up about the transparency within our government and where our money is going to, we have millions of dollars left in taxpayer dollars in Ukraine sitting behind. We've got billions of dollars going into different countries that will look for us. They wouldn't come to us for anything if we ever need a help. And as it goes back to being China dependent, we're looking for them to fund us when we should be the ones funding them and making sure we know that we're America and we have the greatest economy. We could have the greatest economy, you know, and well, they don't teach that because it's just not on their agenda. Everything is agenda based and you're not really able to think freely. You're not able to learn about the actual economic state of America because they want you to pour your money into taxes that we don't know where they're going and it's just a problem, and it's been a problem. Yeah, so uh, between Bernie Sanders economics or Donald Trump economics, you would favor? I'd favor Donald Trump. Um, I'm not one to speak specifically on why, but at the same time, you know, when he was in office, you could do things like buy homes. You could go to the gas, ta gas station and fill up your tank with $25 worth of gas. Now you're going, you're paying 5 to $6 for a gallon, and it's the, the markets don't lie and you know with the White House archives there's no president that we've had that's been able to come in and instantly raise that 7% diversity like African American Asian American Hispanic Americans unemployment unemployment rates like down the way he did a rising economy lifts all boats and all races and all classes exactly and you get paid the same if you can do the right amount of work and the equal amount of work, and that's like another problem with socialism and what they don't teach in our schools, especially. These kids are smarter than their college professors at CU Boulder. Tanner, last question for you. Uh, if a young person is going to college somewhere and they're not really aware of Turning Point USA, uh, what do they find at the website? tpusa.org, and why should they sign up? tpusa.com, and they should sign up for a magnitude of different reasons. 
One is that Turning Point is indeed when it's upon a campus is a city on a hill. It truly provides light to a place that's far too often filled with uncommon sense and craziness and by just advocating for stuff that Turning Point does, we not only better the community, but we better ourselves and we better our nation in doing so. The ideas that we're built upon and the ideas that we believe and that we push are the ones that history has proven time and time again are what make countries great and what separate those that are not. And I strongly urge every single college student out there to get involved and to get into this fight because this is something that at sooner or later will be at all of our doorsteps. And when it does, you want to say that you did so and you want to say that you were able to fight when you had to. TPUSA.com is the website, TP, like Turning Point, TPUSA.com. Uh, our guest has been Tanner and Trey. Thanks, guys, for coming on. Of course. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. All right. I'm Dr. Chaffs. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Chaps. I've been praying and teaching for years about the baptism in the Holy Spirit, how you can have the power of God right now for your prophetic or power gifts ministry. This new teaching goes through not just Acts chapter two, when the disciples received the power of God from on high and began speaking in other tongues. But we also teach on the gifts of the Holy Spirit and every instance we could find in church history of the gift of tongues. This product is brand new and available to you for a suggested donation of $30. Call us at 866-Obey-God to get yours today. Or you can find it on our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Click on the online bookstore at the top of the page, PrayInJesusName.org, available for a suggested donation of $30. Or you can call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching and supporting us at PrayInJesusName.org. That's our website. This is a viewer-sponsored show. We can't bring you these newscasts unless you donate today. Please visit PrayInJesusName.org and give online. The Bible says this in Deuteronomy 16, every man shall give as he is able to give according to the blessing of the Lord your God which he has given to you. So if God has blessed you with a lot, then give a lot. If God has blessed you with a little, then give a little. If you need prayer, call us at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best financial donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now, 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.